Howdy, it's Pat again. Welcome to Interesting Indie Investigation, the series where I go through a list of super niche, unpopular games I've been accumulating on my phone in an attempt to finally delete them and come with an array of new and exciting indie game experiences. Today, we're looking at another free game, The Things We Lost in the Flood. This game is so boring, I almost fell asleep while playing it. To keep myself awake, I wrote this script while still playing the game. <laughs> Multitasking like that reminded me of that scene in What Remains of Edith Finch, where you have to keep chopping fish while playing within Lewis's daydream. Anyways, all you have to do to play the game is keep hitting space to keep the boat moving and occasionally look up to see if a bottle is nearby. That's the main hook of the game, that players can leave behind messages at any time by pressing tab, and as you row your boat through the somber gray pixel art, you can find other players' messages in the form of bottles and read them. It's kinda neat, but it would be nicer if it were a system within an actual game. As it is now, it's essentially a cookie clicker with the Dark Souls message system. The most compelling part of this game are the prompts on the messages like, What are your biggest regrets? Or, What are you afraid of letting go of? However, contextually, this doesn't make any sense. Why are scrolls in the ocean labeled with writing prompts? You could say that doesn't matter, but then what's the point of making it a playable game? As it is now, it only serves to pad out the prompts with repeated spacebar pressing. The concept of being prompted with thought-provoking questions in a contextually relevant and gameplay supplemented game does sound quite dandy. Sadly, this one's a bit of a swing and a miss. I always find it hard to criticize cute passion projects like this because there's clearly love and creativity poured into it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Criticizing is like breathing to me. I have no mercy.